Hello, my friends. I'm out here at a hotel. Annabelle started a vacation this week. So here I am in the hotel, you know. Got a barking dog next door. Barking, barking, barking. And practicing the fruit of the spirit. Well, real first world problems. Won't bore you with them. Well, let's see. I, I don't have anybody watching yet. Well, you have five. Well, that's great. You know, it used to be in the old days with the Periscopians, we'd have thousands of people. Thousands upon thousands. And uh, nowadays, with the Texas Depression and uh, Great Depression, what am I supposed to say? Anyway, I wanted to talk to whoever could see this and whoever gets to watch it, because did you hear a couple of things? You just got, I just can't, I can't go without, I can't wait for a week to go to the studio and talk about it. The UFO hearing, did you hear this crazy stuff? My gosh, these guys are not like, these are, these are incredible. These, these are people that are suffering threats, career-ending Fighter pilots, people with a real, um, I mean, these are intelligent, gifted, talented people. And, and they're saying, yes, we have, um, <laughs> I mean, crazy. Yes, we have. Actually, here's the deal. Listen to this. Crash retrieval. Crash retrieval. That means that uh, some, some of one of these, um, you know, alien things crashed. Crash retrieval. And the fighter pilot. Uh, said that they uh, found remains. Asked, uh, did you find the human remains? Well, we did find remains, but it doesn't match any DNA that's identifiable. In other words, they got somebody, something there. And, and it's not, you know, some uh, groundhog that they, you know, a drone crashed into because it's not identifiable. Uh, that's what he, the guy says anyway. Do you believe that? I, I tell you what, I, because, you know, I subscribe to the theory that these objects that are seen are actually are actually fourth dimensional spirit beings that are breaking through the earth dimensional or a, or a, a other dimensional spirit being breaking through the the dimension of our earth space, and that's why they move erratically, kind of like they have a laser pointer. You can move it around; it does weird stuff. But it's not because the laser pointer isn't the you know the light isn't an object. It's it's breaking through from another dimension. But that, that's what I thought. But now if they actually have, now I want to know, did this creature have a MAGA hat? I just got to get, I got to know that now. <laughs> Can you imagine that? It's like E.T. with a MAGA hat. Okay, so so that's, that's one thing. But then there was this other story, right? I mean, you, you, you don't want to miss these points I'm about to make. The, the, uh, the Department of Defense comes up and says, where AI is a is a big the big threat. Yes, artificial intelligence is a huge threat. Artificial intelligence is a super dangerous threat. Why? Because it could be able to calculate the recipe for a new COVID uh, that would be you know a lethal to the max, you know, killing fifty percent of humanity. And it could be fa this this computers can actually calculate and think stuff through. So the so the Nate, so the Department of Defense guy says basically, um, and we are working on this before China gets it, which means. That are AI, rather than, you know, you were worried about the dangers of AI, these knuckleheads are going to go full tilt boogie. They're going to go warfare AI, and it's going to control all of AI in order to have it as a military, you know, it's like Dr. Strangelove here. If you ever remember that movie with Stanley Kubrick years ago. This is Dr. Strange. This is the military is the stupidest people. I mean, they're the ones, if you really want to get down to it, and the CIA. The CIA and the DOD are the ones that gave Fauci a wink, wink while he went over to communist China to go work on a bioweapon under the guise of trying to find the antivirus in case a virus breaks out. We're going to create the virus and then come up with the antivirus. We better do it before China gets it. Duh, you're working with China to do it. Ding, 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 ding. Nobody's, nobody's getting to the bottom of that story. It doesn't, doesn't matter. What matters to me is that they said to the congressional oversight that has oversight of the CIA and black ops and these committees, they were told, you don't know what's going on and asked about, asked about it. The woman who was in charge of the committee that gives oversight to these black ops, she said, they don't tell me anything. In an interview today with Bannon, she was asked, well, how much do you know? She says, 5%. If I want to find something out, I've got to go to Europe. And then the Europeans will tell me what's going on. The only thing that our own CIA and DOD gives me is stuff that's really on the internet, open source. I could get it from anywhere. Folks, the arrogant, the hubris, 
and the and the the you, you saw how they handled Afghanistan. I mean, doesn't that just fill you with confidence that you want them to have something 10 times more powerful than an atomic bomb, hydrogen bomb? You really want those knuckleheads to have that technology? Uh, the same CIA that tried to take Trump out and evidently killed Kennedy, and the theory might be killed the, killed the uncle and the father. Oh, by the way, and I'm not on a weird rant. I'm not going Alex Jones here. Well, I'll give you an Alex Jones story in a minute. But do you know that um, everything right now, I'm just giving you the news, which is why I have, to, I have to tell you this stuff because you won't hear it like fast like this with no commercials. So here, here's anywhere else. So here, here's the thing. Man, so much is going on. The CIA and the Department of Defense is not allowing the government to have oversight and they are incompetence. I, like I said, you saw Afghanistan. No, they have to be given oversight. It's kind of like Treadstone. It's, it's like, remember those Treadstone scenes with Jason Bourne where they're going in, they're doing their stuff and they're afraid the government's going to find out about them and Pam Bondi's going to, exp not Pam Bondi, well, whoever it was, Pamela, whatever, uh, is going to expose it. So they have to, so Jason Bourne basically with, you know, um, Greenbrier or Blackbriar or whatever that's called, his operation was all black ops and nobody knew about it except these, that's what these guys are. It's like, Hollywood is actually, actually accurate, telling these artistic stories, like prophetic almost. All right, so I, I, I gotta cover all this stuff. The Hunter Biden deal. So you should have been, if you had really known what happened two weeks ago, you would have been pulling your flipping hair out because the, D, the D, Department of Justice, the, um, the DOJ, actually worked the deal out secretly that uh, Hunter would be able to be let off um, in ex and, 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 and be given, if, if he pled guilty to two like misdemeanors, his gun tax evasion in some modest way. But five years they've been looking at this. And now we got like up to $14 million worth of, of unaccounted for money. But they, the deal was he would have blanket immunity from all further prosecution. Think about this. They set it up. Merrick Garland with Delaware, they had a secret kind of deal set up so that Hunter would get immunity from all prosecution in the future as a result of saying, yeah, I missed a couple hundred thousand dollar taxes here. I don't know, it's been an accounting error, my mistake, I'll pay for it. Aha, that would have protected Biden because they couldn't have prosecuted Hunter to go get any information. But the, the judge was asking, uh, does this give blanket immunity from all future prosecution? And the, uh, then the def you know, prosecutor had to say, well, technically no. And then the defense said, well, no, then we don't have a deal because the deal was he was supposed to get blanket immunity. And, and then, then, then the judge says, there's something fishy about this. I mean, I think I'm going beyond what is constitutionally even my prerogative to say there's like blanket immunity from all future prosecution. I'm not going to, that's not going to be my, I can't sign off on that decision that you just told me to sign off on. So here's the bad news. You think you're out of the suspense of this stuff? She's got, she gave them like 30 days to come up with another deal. Oh, come up with another deal. It's like the defense and the prosecutors are working together to try to come up with a deal that will get Hunter Biden immunity. So then he said, well, all right, I'm pleading guilty then. I'm not gonna, if there's no deal, I'm not gonna plead, you know, and I'm pleading not guilty. So he said, if I'm not gonna get any deal, then I'm just gonna say I'm not guilty. So he's, he's gonna try to say everything's a big misunderstanding, but the problem is gonna get greater. Now, this guy, Devin Archer, who evidently has evidence of Joe Biden being on phone calls, Joe's gonna have problems because the, the uh, Bobulinski, and the, who, who was a business partner with Hunter and, and Devin Archer, as well as the CEO of uh, Bur Burisma. Um, these guys all have a history of Biden being on the phone, like the disembodied voice on like seven out of 14 calls. So he can't say, I didn't know anything that was going on. He, he, he's, he, the, I'll tell you what, the ice is getting very thin right now. So and then they're finding more money that was involved. And so, and, and then they're finding out the countries, Romania and uh, Russia and China, and uh, they're finding like all these countries that are involved with uh, doing deal flow with Hunter, who with 20 shell corporations and the uncle and the dad. So my prediction is 
it's going to be that they're going to get rid of Biden and, and Biden and Biden will um, Biden will not be at the top of the ticket. That moves Kamala Harris up, you know, it's kind of like uh, Jenga or Tetris, Tetris, next person up. And then you got to wonder, are they going to try to work Gavin Newsom in or are they going to pull a surprise in Chicago and bring in Michelle Obama? And, and is Trump going to end up in jail? Are they going to try to imprison him? Are they going to try to incarcerate him uh, because of the technicality of paper crimes? Maybe they'll say, well, if we prosecute uh, Biden and he gets impeached, with the Senate is so corrupt. I mean, the Senate's so bad. And McConnell and Schumer, they're both doofuses. I mean, they're not going to, they're not going to want to do any impeachment. But if the, if the evidence is so bad that Biden becomes a, a toxic liability in the ticket, He's going to have to check out, go to the hospital, say, I don't feel well. I think I'm going to step down. And then the prosecution will, will, will look like it's just being mean-spirited. But the truth needs to come out. Um, uh, Gavin Newsom is the guy that they really want to trot out there and have him run. Uh, Trump, they think if they lock him up, it will provoke MAGA violence. Axios has an article out saying that they want to label the MAGA movement, which is they're saying has a, a 25 as they go. Only one out of four people like it. Three out of four have a negative idea of it because the branding. Listen, if you can brand, you know, black Marxist matter and make it popular and LGBT um, uh, Q and have transgender uh, chemical castration of your children, you know, from 11 to 15 and make that popular, I guess you can make MAGA unpopular. So we're up against a really powerful propaganda system from Madison Avenue to Hollywood to everything else. And not to mention fallen nature is by itself inclined to evil. So, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be hard to come up with a brand that is good. I mean, even the word conservative isn't, isn't popular. But um, never, I'm not worried about that because Trump overcame that the first time. The thing is, his people, uh, they're going to try to provoke them to violence so that they can label them as violent extremists, domestic terrorists, you know, uh, white Christian nationalists, domestic terrorists, and all that stuff. But the Achilles heel they have is the transgender movement because uh, more and more young people, children, teens, are suing because of the physical damage. You know, as they come out of the psychological distress, depression, and anxiety, and then they go into this uh, chemical alteration in their body and then surgery and removal of their breasts, etc. They're furious as they realize that they made a mistake. They're not less depressed. They're even more upset. And then as, you know, like Jordan Peterson says, 80% of body dysphoria people, youth, that is thinking you're not comfortable in your body, it sorts itself out. 90% of it sorts itself out by the time you're 18, which is why there's which is why in Scandinavia and the Netherlands and Denmark and in the UK, they're making it illegal to do these surgeries on anyone younger than 18 because by 18, a lot of them change their mind. So how cruel to work on grooming a kid at 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I mean, you have to be a sicko uh, leftist monster mom to be encouraging your boy to be a girl. And uh, there are people that do that, by the way. So, um, and then, then your child is destroyed for the rest of his life. But uh, that is backfire. So they're going to try to go after uh, all the MAGA people, all the Christians, and label them as domestic extremists in order to embarrass Christians into not supporting Trump or voting, and then hoping that violence is going to happen if he gets incarcerated, all this stuff. But, uh, but, there's always the but. And uh, Satan has a big butt, and God likes to kick it. So, uh, I believe that we're going to also see God's deliverance, because I think there could be a shift and there's a mama bear movement that is coming out against the trans thing. It's the mom's natural serotonin instinct. It's a chemical thing to protect the cubs. Uh, you know, the Bible talks about, you, you know, you're better to you know, run into a drunken man than a she bear robbed of her cubs. You start messing with women's children. And boy, I'll tell you what, I don't care if you're liberal or if you're independent or if you're conservative. You're, gonna, you're bringing out Al-Qaeda there. So um, what happens is, the women's movement in South America took off. You guys haven't been tracking this. It, it, the anti-trans surgery thing took off in Europe a year ahead of us. Uh, but in South America, a movement started called Don't Mess With My Kids. Boom, hashtag, Peru, Colombia, Argentina. Don't mess with my kids, Bolivia. And the mama bears rose up and whacked their husbands and boyfriends and said, get out on the street. And the men went and protested with the women and it shook up the government so bad that they had to get, they had to kind of slow down on the trans movement. Soros literally had to take his, uh, 
his open society funding out of 20 NGOs in Peru because they got kicked in the butt so bad by the don't mess with my kids movement that they even had politicians had to leave office. And that is working its way north. It's in the air right now. So while they go after the MAGA crowd and while they go and try to vilify all the Trump supporters, the mama bears are going to rise with the don't mess with my kids um, hashtag. You're going to start seeing it come up. Check out Jenny Donnelly with her voice. Uh, got a couple of ministries. You've got Telestai is one of them, but I think her voice, just put Jenny Donnelly, spell it however you do it, and Google will fix it. And check her out. There's women like that that God's raising up that are going to start to have uh, the women's movement uh, moving with them. And uh, so I've given you the Den the Dems going to try to demonize MAGA. They're going to try to jail Trump. They hope it provokes violence, um, but they but that that it might not work. That might backfire. Um, sentiment might come against them. Uh, Biden is very toxic uh, because this situation is going to go away. Um, uh, Kamala is like unelectable, but they'll, they'll try to dress her up. Um, the only alternative is Chicago surprise with uh, Michelle maybe running and then Barack would be, he'd be as happy as, a, uh, you know, as a, a, a pig in mud, you might say, because he'd be back in the White House and get a stab at global leadership, maybe at the UN. It's crazy times, folks. But I really believe all this is working out towards this great awakening, that the shaking, the shaking that's happening is actually, uh, is producing enough instability so that the mindsets, are, I think the enemy is going to lose his grip on people because it's going to look more and more absurd all the time. The uh, irrational nature of um, the oppressive regime on the left, our, our open borders, our collapsing economy, um, there's, it's going to be hard to make this thing look pretty. And I don't care how they try to mind control you with the media outlets. More people aren't listening to them. They're, they're listening to the Joe Rogan, John Kennedy. Hey, hey, Robert Kennedy Jr. I knew what I was going to say. Then I'll sign off. Robert Kennedy Jr. Do you know what he said? He said, Biden and the uh, Merrick Garland, they're refusing to give him security. Now, here's a man whose father was assassinated, whose uncle was assassinated who he believes in, and people are saying actually has CIA roots. Think about that, the government assassinating. The, this, this black ops group that needs to be shut down is, uh, that won't account to Congress. Uh, they refuse to give him Secret Service protection. They don't think he, he warrants it yet. Well, what do you think about that? May the veil come off. We already have it off of our minds. I know you, you're clear, I'm clear, right? We're all clear? May the bag come off the head of the rest of America. Um, may, it, may the deception, like a veil, tear in Jesus' name. And may the truth and the light come in with shocking clarity. May there be a massive shift in revulsion in public opinion even. And it can happen. It can happen. And it can happen. And may truth sweep away a refuge of lies like hail coming down in a storm. All right, well, I'm getting a slow connection indication here on my phone, so I'm going to catch you guys later. By the way, the BRICS nations are meeting August 22nd to destroy the American dollar. It's going to be China and Russia and Saudi Arabia and India. And uh, you know what? They're doing a good job. We're doing a good job of destroying our own dollar because the, uh, Biden intends to unleash another $5 trillion worth of debt onto the United States. And, and it's, it's going up to all the corrupt pockets. We gotta stop this thing, folks. In the meantime, you wanna go to um, lancewallet.com forward slash Birch. lancewallet.com forward slash Birch and get the 20 page report on the silver is mine, the gold is mine. Understand why commodities, silver and gold is where you wanna go. Paper money is dangerous. You want your wealth in something that can be a boat that floats. The BRICS nations are all going to go with a gold-backed currency to compete with the dollar. So make sure you have your own gold-backed currency. All right, lancewallet.com forward slash birch, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye-bye.